Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today on the DCC Guy, this is going to be part one in a two-part video series covering first decoder connectors, the types of plugs and sockets that are used on decoders, and any tips or tricks on in making installations. And then in the second video, we'll talk about testing decoders on the benchtop before you install them in a locomotive. So, let's go ahead and get started with part one of this two-part series. One more time before we get started, I want to ask you, go ahead, hit the subscribe button here on the right-hand side of the screen. That way, you'll be notified every time that I upload a new video onto YouTube. We're getting close to a thousand now, and I'm hoping by the end of December that you guys will put me over. So thanks a lot, and let's get started with the video. Okay, I've zoomed in a bit so we can take a look at uh, some types of decoders and connectors that are available on the market today or might be available on the second hand market. Um, first, there's this typical uh, hardwire type decoder. It's available. This is an older uh, Tsunami, but their Tsunami 2s also come with these uh, plain wires uh, on them. So. These are great for installations where you don't have any kind of DCC socket or anything of that nature where you can just plug a decoder in and, uh, and be off and running. So with these, it's great for a hardwire installation where you need to, you know, make the direct connections to track pickups and your motor and the speaker and the lights and everything else. Um, in those cases where you do have one of the 8-pin type sockets, and these 8-pin sockets have been around for 25 years at least, and uh, a lot of model locomotives were produced with sockets for plugging in these 8-pins, and they're still available on a lot of locomotives today. And in a separate video, which I will provide a link to above here, um, I showed how to uh, add one of these uh, eight pin uh, plugs to uh, the wires on a decoder. So uh, take a look at that and I think it'll give you an idea of uh, the efforts required. Another type that uh, became available oh, in the mid 90s, uh, not long after DCC became pretty well established in the United States, uh, was this JST type plug. And what that is, it's a plug and socket arrangement, as you can see here. It has nine pins ranged in a row here with nine wires. So it gave you one additional wire over the eight pin plug. But the great thing about this is you can disconnect it. You can uh, make the connections on the, with the wires and install it in a locomotive model or add a socket to it. And then you can just plug in your decoder. For a while, Athern also was making uh, um, locomotives with a uh, compatible socket for these. I'm not sure if they still are. The last Athern RS3 that I did uh, had a board with one of these um, sockets on it. So you might, uh, you might want to keep that in mind. But these are, you know, they're still available. And, and if you actually, if you take this apart, I think there's a 9-pin JST in here as well. So these things have been used, and they're a neat little uh, way of making the connection with decoders. Um, another thing that is rapidly becoming uh, popular in the marketplace are these 21-pin uh, decoders. Now, these were originally developed by ESU, the makers of Loke Sound, in Europe. These are actually called a 21M. TC, which means a Marklin uh, Trix connector, 21 pin. So uh, with 21 pins, they're easy to plug in typically, and um, you can make 21 connections by just, you know, making a quick connection here. Uh, they often come with the uh, uh, speaker connections already made. So these are the closest thing to a plug-and-play type installation that you're going to find anywhere these days, uh, particularly with sound decoders. Um, this particular board here is a uh, 
a wow sound uh, decoder board from TCS. It has a, uh, let me see if I can pop this off here and show you. It has a 21 pin decoder already installed on it. See, it pops off just like that. And uh, so you install this in your locomotive and then you just pop in the board like so. Let me show you one other neat little thing here. That is actually um, a micro SD card right there. And that's where they store all the sound information and the like for these decoders. It's a neat little trick that they, uh, they went with and that's how they can install so many decoder uh, prime mover sounds and whistles and bells and horns and everything else on one little decoder is it's all encoded on this uh, micro SD card. Now, a lot of locomotives, as I said, are coming with, uh, you know, boards like this that have a 21-pin uh, 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 connector on them. This particular one is made for various Athern or Atlas um, locomotives so that you can just uh, install that board in there. It has the Keep Alive capacitors already on it. And then... After it's installed, you can plug in your decoder and you're ready to roll. So it's a really nice little approach. In other situations where they might not have, uh, where you might not have a, um, a wow sound decoder available or a package like that available for installation in a locomotive. And what these are, they're a neat little circuit board uh, made by a guy, uh, Nick Santos. And he has a website, Nick's Trains. N-I-X-T-R-A-I-N-Z. This is similar to these other boards. It has connections for the motor. It also nicely has connections here for a Keep Alive uh, connection. So you can hardwire a Keep Alive in here. And then on each end, it's got uh, two contacts for uh, the train uh, power pickup wires from the trucks and two speaker wire connections. Then this little guy here lifts right off show you that here. And it's got speaker and power connections at this end. But this uh, particular uh, little circuit board allows you to make all of your uh, function connections, lights and the like. Uh, it allows you to then, uh, after you've made all those connections, to go ahead and just plug it back into the circuit board. And you can install this circuit board in and then Simply plug in the decoder. So for those situations where your locomotive does not have a 21-pin socket and you're, um, you, you don't have the uh, option of using one of the wow sound decoders or boards like this, you can use one of Nick's trains type boards. So that's a nice little trick right there. Um, there are a, a, very, a few other type uh, decoders available out there. And I'll show you how to make these connections for testing these in just a moment. Um, the main thing for testing any decoder uh, is that you need a load uh, on the decoder itself. And that means having a motor attached to it. So if you're going to make your own, say, tester, and I'll show you a commercial tester in a minute, you'd have to build a little board with a motor. Uh, you might add a speaker. Uh, for testing uh, sound decoders. You might add connections for a couple of lights, maybe a couple LEDs and resistors and all of that. Uh, but the ones that the one I'll show you in a minute, it comes that way already. I know though that there were articles in uh, InScale magazine, I believe in 2001 and 2006, uh, on building your own decoder testers. So that is an option. But to be honest with you, um, once you gather all the materials, and put it all together on a board. Uh, all the time invested, all the money invested to do all that, you can probably break even by going ahead and buying either the TCS board or uh, tester or the uh, Loke Sound ESU decoder tester that I will uh, show you in just a second. So let's go ahead and move on to that, and we'll take a look at how to test decoders before you install them in locomotives. Well, that pretty much wraps it up for part one in this series on decoders, specifically decoder connectors, uh, sockets, and plugs that are available on uh, decoders in the market today. So uh, I'll be back in a few days 
with part two of the series on testing decoders on the benchtop before you install them in a locomotive. So come on back and take a look at that video too.